Hi everyone. Um, well, let's get started. Um, I hope the previous video made sense to you um, because it's from now on it's just going to be even more um, intense. Um, so yeah, let's start. So again, we have used uh, um, um, examples from these sources. So if you want, you can take a look at those. And when we are compiling, this is mostly the one we are going to use. We are using at and syntax instead of um, Intel syntax. So yeah, let's start. So um, one of the instructions we are going to take a look at is like the SIF shift instruction so um remember the bitwise shift you have done so far uh it's in your co7 assignment so um the bitwise uh shift is basically uh like this like if you have like zero zero one zero and you do a shift by like for example two in that case it is going to go like this this one was shifted once and then twice so it was shifted two steps this is what shift does so um as you can see this is mostly done in the binary so it makes sense that um your processor or uh, will have some sort of like um like what is it called like command for that like um that's why well shifts are pretty important um command for um assembly so yes there are shifts shift um, left shift right shift left shift right so this l is basically long just like before and this basically means shift and this means left and this r means right so uh one thing to notice is like um, this is s a l l so um just like before like add it's going to be left up equals left up um, left shift right up so this is basically it this is just like uh, the c syntax like there is absolutely no difference between them so there's also the shift a right and um, long so once again right up left up so it's going to be left up equals left up right shift by right up okay so um whenever it has a it's going to preserve the sign what does that mean we're going to talk about it soon enough so um there's also the shll the format is same as before and it works just same as sall the different one is shrl in this case the high bit is going to be set to zero this one preserves the sign but this one is just going to replace that sign with zero no matter what okay so what does uh, preserving a sign means for example your number is something like this one zero 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 and if you right shift it by one it's going to be one zero zero and over here as it was its sign bit was one it's going to be one this is what um preserving the sign means if it was something like 0, 1, 0, 0, and you shift it by 1, it's going to be 0, 0, 1, 0. This one is not going to be 1 because it's preserving the sign. Why does preserving a sign is important? Because remember, if your sign bit is 1, it's a negative number. If your uh, sign bit is 0, it's a positive number. So that's why uh, preserving a sign matters. If it's an unsigned, even then it's important because like uh, for an unsigned number if it's like one zero 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 one 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 and if you do this one for an unsigned number it's going to give you a wrong answer because in that case it's going to be so um, you have to make sure like uh, understand when any of them are used um, for unsigned this is the better choice for signed, this is usually the best choice. Okay, let's move forward. 
so um, you can actually use left shifts to do multiplication because um, shifting an integer operand to the left by k bits is equivalent to multiplying the operand's value by 2 to the power k so if you have SALL we already saw that SALL means basically left shift by 1 and we are going to left shift this the value that's inside this register it's going to be equivalent to EAX equals 2 into EAX okay the reason is um, remember we said over here that if it's shifted by k bytes it's going to be k to the power sorry 2 to the power k and this is how it looks like and over here k is 1 so that's why it's EAX if we are shifting it like if we are shifting edx by 3 it's going to be edx into 2 to the power 8 sorry 2 to the power 3 which means 8 so that's why it's equivalent to 8 into 8 uh 8 into edx okay so for example we can see over here that if edx is this number 101 one, we shifted by 3 digits And this number is equivalent to 40 so what happened was 5 into 2 to the power 3 which is 5 into 8 which is basically 40 okay since general multiplication is much more expensive and well it is trust me <laughs> um, so uh, it's more expensive than um, shifting bytes we should prefer using le um, left shift instruction when multiplying by the power of 2 because um, left shift, right shift are pretty, um, well, they do not need that many cycles to calculate, but uh, multiplication itself takes a lot of cycles. So whenever you are doing some sort of like um, uh, multiplication, which can be equal to two to the power K, in that case, um, your compiler is going to optimize it in a way that it just does left shift. And if you do it by yourself, then the optimization is going to be even faster so your code is going to run faster right shift so uh, in left shift we saw that we can just like uh, expect it to be uh, multiplied by 2 to the power k that is also kind of true for 2 to the uh, like um, right shift as well but not always okay so whenever you're shifting an integer operand to the right by k bits um, it might be expected to divide the operands value by 2 to the power k so whenever you are doing this this is what we expect but it's not always true because we can we saw that um, in case of shrl it shifts zero on the uh, whenever we do a shift it puts zero on the left okay so um, this will indeed perform integer division by 2 provided that the value in eax is interpreted as an unsigned integer if it's a signed this is not going to help out for example if we have 8 bit unsigned representation of 255 the instruction above would perform the following transformation which is uh, we just shift it by one right over here so what happens is we get this number which is basically uh, 127 which if we double it equals to this I mean not completely because there is a reminder right so um, yeah as we can see if we do um, 255 and shift it by 1 we get 127 which is equivalent to its half so it works in this case because in this case we are using shrl and that puts a zero at the beginning but what would have happened if we did sarl uh well uh before i show this example i'm just going to show it for this one if we did it with sarl the number wouldn't change at all because if we shift it by one and we did s a r l 
it would still be one 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 so um 255 would still be 255 okay so let's see an another example so in this case we, if we consider the 8-bit representation of 200 the instruction above would produce the transformation of this so we have one one zero zero one zero 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 so if we shift it by one we get this number and then the sign bit is replicated because as the sign bit over here was one we replicated it and in this case we see that um this is the number we are getting this is actually this number and it is definitely incorrect right so we can see that um the correct result would have been like 100 and it would have been represented by this and we know that we would have gotten that if we used shrl okay so whenever you're working with unsigned make sure that it's a sarl because s a sorry shrl sarl is not going to work for unsigned another thing to um notice is like um shifting a non-negative sign like not to notice shifting a non-negative sign integer operand to the right by k bits will divide the operand's value by 2 to the power k we already saw that right so um ssrl is going to work sarl is going to work sometimes if eax holds a non-negative signed number like signed integer the leftmost bit will be zero and so both of these instruction will yield the same number okay so in case of non-negative um, signed numbers it's definitely going to work because if it's a non-negative it's going to have a zero at the beginning of the number so it will always look like something like this so even if we repl replicate it it's going to be the same but if it is a negative number the high bit will be one in that case shrl is not going to give you the right answer why do you think that's the case well shrl puts a zero at the beginning right so um if that happens your negative number is going to turn into a positive number so shrl totally fails when it tries to uh, do a um, division if it's um, dividing a negative number but but if it's a non-negative number it's definitely going to work okay so what happens if we try uh, to um, divide a negative number with SARL so um, if we try that uh, we know that SARL replicates the sign bits so it will yield a, a negative result but if we have a representation of minus 7 we get this number you can verify it by doing this complement of 7 So if we do a right shift we, um, with SARL, we get this answer, okay? So is it the correct one? According to mathematics, it's correct. But according to C, it's not. So um, depends on which answer you want. It's either true or false, okay? So um, honestly, right shifting a negative number isn't usually like doesn't usually make sense so that's something you might not see in a uh, assembly representation of a code but you know what to expect now okay so um yeah that's all about like shifting and stuff you can use shifting to do um multiplication and all of those so yeah let's move forward so we also have the bitwise operations which you will be working with your uh, data lab we have the and and remember this is the long we have or we have xor we have not um this is literally the c syntax so this is pretty self-explanatory i don't think there's much for me to explain here if you understood the binary um binary representation and okay i am bad at spelling so binary representation or like bitwise 
you are pretty familiar with these oper operations so um, there's not much to talk about here this is basically the format like uh, it's always going to be left equal to left and right so yeah so um, now we are going to take a look at what happens when you call a function from inside your main or like you call a function from a function like what happens to the stack itself and um, this might answer many of your questions you had before so let's take a look at it so this is what our stack is usually going to look like um, this is a function we are going to call it's called arith it has three parameters x y z calling a function causes the creation of a stack frame dedicated to that function okay so whenever you call a function, uh, it's going to have its own um, memory location in the stack. The frame pointer register, RBP, points to the beginning of a stack frame. Because remember, we use things like RBP minus four, uh, RBP minus eight, and stuff like that. So the frame pointer register, RBP, points to the beginning of the stack frame for currently running function, okay? When um, the stack pointer, which is RSP, points to the last thing that was pushed on the stack. So it basically points to the end of the stack, okay? As an optimization, RSP may not actually be updated. Sometimes it may not update. More on this later. We'll talk about that in the next lecture. So just keep it in mind. Other than that, um, you can just like follow for now. So um, yeah, this part is actually the part for the caller, like whoever is calling the function. And this part is dedicated to the function called arithmetic, the current one, okay? So whenever uh, arith is called, RBP is going to point here, RSP is going to point at the end of it. And this part is uh, for the previous function like uh, whichever um, parameters that function was using and like um, whatever variable it was using all of those are here and rbp is going to point to a new part which is for the new function you're working with so uh, if we have like int x int y int z and these are the variables we are going to use these are the operations we are going to use We'll take a look at them one by one. So um, what happens is like whenever you write a C code, the first six function arguments are passed in, like passed in registers. Additional arguments are passed on the stack. Okay, it, it's a case of optimization. The arguments stored in registers are often moved somewhere else on the stack before any computations happen. And in this example, what is happening is um, just like before, T1, T2, T3, and T4 are going to be put one by one. You saw in the previous um, lecture, if you can recall, that like um, whatever variable you're using, they are going to be put inside your stack. And then we have this. These are the parameters that were sent and they are being stored here. We already used till 16, then it's going to be 20, 24, 28. So uh, in the previous lecture, did you realize that it's always like four, eight, 12, like always a multiplication of four? Why do you think that's the case? Well, the main reason is these numbers are integers and in a 32 bit, like integer in this case are a size of 32. So four basically means four bytes. So four into eight is 32 bit. That's why it's always by the multiplica um, multiplication of four. And that's also the reason why it's eight. So you're working with a 64 bit um, architecture, right? In that case, the all the addresses have 64 bit. And that's why the um, return address requires 8 bits sorry 8 bytes and that's why it's rbp plus 8 okay as i mentioned um, the return address is 8 bytes and
and that's why it starts um like it has like eight bytes of um memory location the old value of rbp the rbp itself has a um like it also had a like you know um what is it called memory location right and that one is also going to be eight bytes and then rbp minus four because um t1 only requires um four byte um memory location then it's going to be minus eight minus 12. okay so if any of this um like if any of these variables were like u int 64t in that case instead of 16 over here uh it would have been minus 20 because that's how much memory location it requires but as we are working with just like 32 bit or like four bytes that's why all of them are multiplication of four i hope that makes sense um if you don't you can always ask me for a better understanding this is as far as i can explain to you in an online platform okay so yeah let's see what happens to the code one by one so um if you remember the previous like um okay so this is what it looks like right so rbp minus 4 is going to be location for t1 t2 is going to be getting rbp minus 8 t3 is going to be getting rbp minus 12 t4 is going to get rbp minus 16 x is going to get uh, rbp minus 20 y is going to be rbp minus 24 and z is going to be R rbp minus 28 so um, you don't have to memorize it. We'll be sh showing that in the slides anyway. So um, this is what the mapping is for the, in case of like X, Y, and T1, because these are the ones we're going to use. So we're going to just keep a track of them over here. So let's see what happens. The first thing, whenever this, this particular code is going to be ran, the first thing it's going to do is take X and Y and put them in registers so um x was in minus 24 right sorry um it starts with y so y was in minus 24 so it puts y into eax okay then we are going to take x and put it into edx okay and then we are going to do a add Remember, add is basically doing eax equals eax plus edx, okay? So uh, eax is basically storing this. Hmm? I hope that makes sense. And then we are going to move the um, value we just received and put it in place of t1 and we saw that t1 is in minus 4 rbp minus 4 so right now by doing this part we are getting a equivalence of this c code okay so i hope that makes sense let's see what happens for the next line for the next line we are just going to do a um, z into 48 so you may ask like it could be just like uh, a simple i m u l l and then um like um if it's in like edx it's just going to be there and it's going to be multiplied by sorry um it's going to multiply by 48 it could be it's as simple as that but why are we doing all of this because uh, multiplication is a very um costly um costly operation so what c compiler does is it tries to um make it as optimized as possible so in this case it does not do a imul directly it does something else it tries to optimize it as much as possible so whenever there is any sort of like constants it tries to break it into something similar to two to the power k because that way um, it's going to be easier for it to do in less um, CPU cycles. So anyway, um, just like before, the mapping of Z is in 28 and T is in 8. 
Okay, so let's see what happens. So we are going to take the value of Z and put it into EDX. So EDX is equal to Z right now. So another thing we're going to do is take the value of EDX and put it into EAX. So EAX has the value of Z. Now we are going to do a summation. So we are going to sum EAX with EAX. We are getting 2Z. Then we are adding it again. Like we are adding EAX with EDX. So we are getting 3Z. Then what we are going to do is left shift it by 4. So we are basically doing 2 to the power 4, which is 16. So we get this, which is equivalent to 3Z into 16. And as you can see, it's basically 48Z. So it was basically an optimization of this. Like instead of just directly doing a multiplication, it did z plus z got 2z, then 2z plus z equals 3z, and then multiply it with 16, because 3 into 16 is 48, which we want to do here. And then get that value and put it into 8, which is basically the mapping of t2. So this part of the code is done by this. It optimized the whole constant part and tried to avoid multiplication as, as much as possible because if it tried to do a multiplication directly, it could have taken it more CPU cycles than this, which isn't very intuitive, but like multiplication is a very costly uh, operation. Then we have this T3. So this part of the code is basically going to look like this. Okay, so um, it's weird, right? Like this number itself, we're just doing an and, whatever value was in T1 and end it with zero, F, 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 F. So um, we could have done a and over here, but think about it. These are all ones. So what we're doing is like, for example, if it's one byte, if it's the second byte, it's the third byte, it's the fourth byte. So we can represent this part in this fashion. F, F, zero, zero. So whatever value T1 had over here is going to turn into a zero because we are doing a and, right? And then this part is going to be same as before because if you do end with one, it's going to be the number as before. So in this case, we're basically extending T1. Like um, we're not extending, we're just making the last two bytes of it into zero. So let's see the assembly equivalent of it. So we are going to take the value in, and put it into EAX because EAX, um, sorry, T1 was stored in RBP minus four. So uh, we are basically getting this. Then what we're doing is we are using a command called move ZWL. We'll see what that means. Over here, this operation is actually being done. We'll see how it's done, okay? Uh, and then we are just taking that value and putting it inside RBP minus 12 which was the memory location of T3. So we did this part like this. So there are some sort of optimization done here. We'll see how. So we saw this instruction called move ZL, right? What it does is this moves a zero extended Z word, um, sorry, zero extended word, which is, uh, we know that word means 16 bit, right? and stores it into A. Sorry, my bad. So what it does is, um, let's take a look at it over here. So um, one thing, if you have noticed, we had EAX, right? But over here, I used, a, we used AX. So in the previous um, lecture, if you can recall, we had a, 
um, register called EAX and it had this virtual register called AX and EAX is actually part of RAX. So these are extensions, right? And these are the virtual ones. So over here, I'm taking AX, a virtual um, register and putting it into AX. So what MoveZL does is it takes a 16-bit um, register and puts it into a 32-bit register and um, appends the rest of the um, numbers with zeros. For example, if your number was something like this, um, I'll write it in a hexadecimal because I don't want to write too many binary. So OX, imagine your number was 1, 2, 4, something like this so this is your first bit sorry byte this is your second byte right so um, this is a 16 bit so what it does is it takes this 16 bit and puts it into a 32 bit so it's still going to be 2a sorry 1 2 4 a and these are going to be filled with zeros that's what move ZL does so it was kind of equivalent to this command, which we wanted to do, since uh, it, the rest of the part will be zero. So as we can see, by doing move ZL, we actually optimize the whole thing. We are actually lucky, okay? So you will be seeing other stuff like uh, move ZB, move SB, and stuff like that. And over here, we are just like lucky that we got this move ZL. So um, let's try to give you a better um, view of what it would have been. So we know that an integer is four bits, four bytes, right? If do we make that mistake? So for example, maybe this number was a b c d one two three four, okay, something like this. If we did a and with this, what we would get is. If we do it and we would get zero 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 one two three four that makes sense so yeah as you can see this part is basically extend like um, filled up with zero and we just have this part so by doing this particular command we just optimize the whole thing instead of doing and we just like um, took this two bytes and extended it with zeros. It's the same thing. So that's why this part works. And the last part, which is pretty simple. And in this case, we cannot do any sort of optimization because the compiler doesn't have any way to know beforehand what's the value of two, T2 and T3 is going to be. Like for example, over here, it was 48. So the compiler knew what it had to do. But in this case, it doesn't have any idea. So to make this happen, it's just going to take the two variables and put them in registers and just do a, um, sorry, and just do a multiplication, okay? It's pretty straightforward. And there's like absolutely nothing else it could have done. So it just did a multiplication. In this case, there wasn't any possibility of any sort of like optimization because it didn't have any previous idea of what it's going to be like, okay? So yeah, and then puts the value inside uh, minus 16, which is T4, as we can see over here. So um, this is how the code is going to look like if you turn it into a binary, uh, sorry, assembly by doing this. This is the beginning of the code like for edit the first thing it does is saves the previous rbp so that when it returns it can take it back by doing this of the queue when everything is done it just takes back the rbp of the previous one and then it returns okay it starts by um moving rsp to rbp because um this is going to be its new position and it's going to start by uh, moving the variables that were sent by EDI, ESI, and EDX 
and put them into stack because we saw that um, x y and z were stored into these three stack uh, addresses right and then at the end like whenever it returns it is this number so eax actually holds on to the return value whenever you do some sort of return eax is the one who holds on to that value okay and then we are setting rsp back to rbp by doing a pop which is like doing a return call okay and we already went through how this part of the codes are going to look like this is basically over here and this is basically over here we also know this part So yeah, that's it for this um, lecture video. I showed you a um, broken, like uh, I broke the whole thing into small pieces so that um, you could understand like how a C code is converted to um, a assembly and what sort of optimizations that can be done or needed to be done are done by the compiler. So this is what your C code is turned into an assembly number like language and the assembly language is later turned into a um, binary um honestly i'm not very satisfied with this explanation because there's a lot to understand like how or why the um like stack needs to hold on to the uh, address itself like why is it important and why does whenever you call some sort of like function um it just like puts the return address like why is the return address needed i hope i can explain it in the later videos and um, i don't know if it's actually covered by the syllabus if it is good if it's not i will try to come up with a bonus video or something like that so i can give you a better understanding of how it works but for now if you understood this part like how we are doing um, summation how we are doing multiplication why the shifting is needed I think you are good enough for this course okay it might be explained much better in your 2506 course but for now i hope this explanation was satisfactory if you did not understand that please ask me okay please um write it down in piazza or come to my office or ask me about it i'll try my best to answer it okay so for now goodbye